أبدأ بالحمد مصليا على محمد خير نبي نرسلا وذي من أقسام الحديث عدة وكل واحد أتى وحدة أولها الصحيح وهو ما اتصل إسناده ولم يشد أو ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سار على سبيله إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فاسلي ألاك سيجزاكم الله خيرا لحسن ظنكم that we, I thank you, I extend my gratitude for the good fortune allowing me to come and visit you to share some benefit, inshallah ta'ala, uh, from the invitation from my close friend who's also Abu Tamim. So you have Abu Wa Tamim, walillahi alhamd. And our Tamims are close in age. <laughs> So inshallah ta'ala, we hope that by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can mention that which is, as mentioned in the advertisement, a glimpse. Because in reality, this topic is not something that we can talk about justly giving it its due right in one sitting. Rather, it's only feasible to talk about small matters regarding Yawm al-Qiyamah. Because this is one of the usul of Iman. As we learn from the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu salam, لما جاء في سورة الرجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وسأله بعد الأسئلة منها سأله أخبرني عن الإيمان when he came in the form of a person. The well-known hadith that is of those fundamental principles of this religion. And he asked the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu salam a number of questions. And from them he mentioned, أَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ iman Inform me about Al-Iman. طيب, before we continue, of the young brothers, what is Iman? Who can tell us what is Iman? And then I ask you, if you don't know, who knows? Someone comes, they see you at the petrol station, because mashallah, this is a bit far, I don't see a train station. I only saw a petrol station. And they say, oh, mashallah, you're a Muslim. I heard about Iman. What is Iman? No one knows? Now, we can summarize Iman in five noons, khams nunats. They say khams nunats. So young brothers, I want you to memorize this. Because the elders, they're passing the flag on to you. You're going to be the next generation to bear the flag to call to Islam. That is your purpose in life. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي عَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا أَنَا وَمَنْ اتَّبَعَنِي so this is my way, I call to Allah Azza wa Jalla upon knowledge, myself and those who follow me. This is what we're here for. This is all in relation to Yawm Al-Qiyamah. What is really going to benefit you after this short period of time in this life, other than what you've done now, for that time, in preparation to meet Allah Azza wa Jalla? So when a person says to you, what is Iman? You say al itiqad bil jinan is belief in the heart. Qawlun bil lisan is the statement of the tongue. What's that statement reflecting? It's a testimony of what is in the heart. How do we know this? The one who says what's not in the heart, what are they? Munafiq. Yaquluna bi al sinatihim ma laysa fi. Him. They say that which is within their tongue, that which isn't in their heart. 
You see, so we have to believe in the heart first. Then we say with our tongue, قول باللسان والعمل بالأركان You act with the limbs. You act upon Islam. That's why they say in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, they say, Al-Islam huwa al-deen al-zahir. When he mentioned what is Islam, this is the apparent Islam. Your practice of Islam that's apparent. Wal-Iman huwa al-deen al-batin. As for Iman, this is the internal part of your Islam. The belief of the heart. Matters of the unseen. Naam. So, amal bil-arkan, actions by a person's limbs. Yazidu bi ta'at al-Rahman. This is a very important condition of Iman. It increases of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa yanqus bi ta'at al-Shaytan. And it decreases by obeying Shaytan, which is disobedience to who? Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is important because, you know, when we're young in the West, we have to remind ourselves of the hereafter because now we're in a time of fitan. A time that the Sahaba would seek refuge from. A time that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi warned us of. So you're going to find some of your friends you knew in Madrasa. When you grew up, you go to school and everyone goes their separate ways. You come back, you meet each other in different situations. What you knew them to be upon, maybe they're not going to be upon that. They're going to tell you, my Iman is down. So what do you say to them? If someone tells you my mind is low, what do you say to this person? If I came to you and said my iman is low, what would you advise me with? Tark al maasi. Leaving off sin. Why? Because we know from the belief of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, your iman only goes down because of sin, because of disobedience to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As well as one ayah that shows the importance of this. Where Allah mentions, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةِ هِيَ الْمَأْوَىٰ Whoever fears standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a yawm, mada? Yawm al-qiyamah. The asal is you believe this in your heart. How much time have you seen the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad says, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir. The most important conditions of iman, the principles of iman is belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. Wal yawm al-akhir. Don't we say when someone dies, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Al-iman billah wal yawm al-akhir. Everything goes back to these two. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we came, to Allah we shall return. La mahala. There's no doubt in this. The issue is that we have forgotten. Or we become negligent. And that's why I say it's not sufficient for us when we speak about this topic in one sitting. As we mentioned, it's just tasawwur, al masail I need to get an idea of the things that is discussed. But as for what is obligatory upon myself included, is that we take a portion of our time, whether it's on a day-to-day basis or a weekly basis, and we take some of the books that are authentic regarding the events of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Wa Wasful Jannah, Wa Naar, and we read them to remind ourselves of this reality, that we want Jannah. We want Jannah. But it's only for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the Quran as being those who deserve it. We are told the amount of times the kuffar of Quraysh, the mushrikeen, they would ask even before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa all of the nations, yas'alunaka anis sa'a. They would ask about the sa'a, the hour, ayyana mursaha. And subhanallah, if you don't know the Arabic language, also it's an encouragement from today. Learn this language. Because then you have access to many materials from the Quran, from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that talk about these details. Where sometimes when it's translated, the meaning is lost. 
Mursaha, you know a ship when it sets its anchor. That's what they refer to as Mursaha. Ayana Mursaha. When will it set its anchor? What are they talking about? Asaha. This hour. Yawm al akhirah Yawm al hisab Laha iddat al asma It has a, num a number of names. A number of names. And some of these names reflect the events that's going to occur, the reality of that day. But the kuffar, they ask about this. Why? Because they don't believe in it. Many of them, they say, I only believe in that which I can see. And that's from the khasais and muslimin yu'minun bil ghayb. From the special features of the muslims, they believe in the unseen. And that's, that's why we say, what is Iman? Because when we look at Iman as a definition, what it is, is that belief in the heart. So why do you pray? Why do you say, Shadu Allah, ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah? Why do you say this? Why do you do acts of worship? Because your heart knows, it believes. In the reality, wa amma man khafa maqama rabbihi, the one who fears standing before his Lord, standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yawm al-akhirah, yawm al-hisab. And it's called Yawm al There's no day after this day. There is no day after this day. It's called the last day for a reason. Because La Amal Ba'dal Yawm. That's why Hassan al Basr he used to say the days are of three types. The days are of how many types? Three. Al Ams. You have yesterday. You cannot do anything except ask Allah to forgive you for it. And you have tomorrow, and it's not for you. It's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. That is the reality. Allah mentions, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu taqullah. The first condition, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he deserving to be feared. وَالْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسُ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ And let the soul look at what is prepared for when? Tomorrow. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say Yawm Al-Qiyamah is a long time away. Because when we speak about Yawm Al-Qiyamah, we have Qiyamah Al-Sughra wa Qiyamah Al-Kubra. We have the minor resurrection. Who knows what this is? Death. Al-Mawt. وَهَذَا لِكُلِّ فَرْدٍ This is for everyone. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Say the death that you're running away from is going to catch you. No matter where you try to run and hide, death will catch you. Does any one of us here know when we're going to die? Can I say, subhanAllah, I'm only 30 something now. I have until I'm 60. When I'm 59, I'll make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal. I'll start to pray on time. I'll fast Ramadan. I'll give sadaqah. And then inshallah ta'ala, a year later, I'm going to die and I'm upon goodness. Does anyone have this guarantee? La. But Allah says, Wal tandu nafsu ma qaddamat limada. لغد. What have you prepared for tomorrow? إنهم يرونه بعيدا. They see it as something that is far away. ونراه قريبا. But we see it as something that is near. Don't deceive yourself. Don't allow shaitan to deceive you to think you have time. That's why Hassan Basri mentioned the days are free. Yesterday is gone. All you can do is make tawbah. Sometimes the tawbah involves you rectifying the rights you have violated of others, as well as asking Allah to forgive you. Tomorrow is not yours, it's not guaranteed. Anta ibn al yawm you are the son of today. Today is yours, right now is yours. So you cannot procrastinate the rights of Allah Azza wa Jalla. You cannot delay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rights. You establish Allah's rights when? Now. Because you don't know. 
Allah says, Ya ayu ladina amu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqati wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah Azza wa Jal as he should be feared and do not die except that you die upon Islam. Tayyib. Do we know when we're going to die? For us to guarantee that that moment in time that it comes to us, baghtah, fajah, suddenly, that we can guarantee will be upon Islam? Do we know that time? La. So how? How can I guarantee I die as a Muslim? What's your name? Jibril. MashaAllah. Jibril, how can we guarantee we die as Muslims? What do I need to do to make sure I die as a Muslim? Pray. Good. What's your name? Ahmed. MashaAllah. What can I do? Jayid. Go Hajj, read the Quran. Who else? What's your name? Yahya. Ya Yahya, khud al kitaba bi quwa. What can I do? How can I ensure I'm going to die as a Muslim? Believe in Allah. Okay, belief in Allah, what does this necessitate from me? What does it require from me? To establish the five pillars of Islam. Okay, part-time or full-time? Full-time. We have to make sure every single second, not minute, second of our life is upon Islam. Is it possible to never sin? Is it possible for any of us to never sin? So, if I'm going to sin, how do I make sure I'm always Muslim, but I'm sinner, I'm disobeying Allah as well? What do I do? Tawbah. Don't delay Tawbah. And when you ask Allah for forgiveness, don't say, Allah, forgive me just for this one sin. Ask Allah to forgive all of your sins. And when I know I'm doing wrong, what do I need to increase in? Dhikr is an act of any goodness. Why? What's the evidence? You gave, gave me an answer. I need evidence now. Okay, which hadith? What else? Good, what else? I love this hadith, subhanAllah. You have to find this hadith, it's in Buluga Maram as well. That's your homework, to benefit from this hadith, but to fadl. No, 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 it's your benefit. The ajal is for you. No, but I want you to... No, no, I don't, I'm not going to narrate, narrate the full hadith. Even in the meaning, you can narrate it first. Because I want them to get... You, I, you need to get this ajab, not me. I'm not taking it from you. This is yours. This is yawm al qiyamah. Don't let anyone take your ajab. You don't give this for free. La. Don't worry. Those who follow you, they will get the reward too. Now, in that situation, someone came to the Prophet and said, Inni asabtu al-hadda fa'aqimhu alayhi. Why did he do this? Because he had fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. The only way you will make tawbah is if you go back to the ayah, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّي The one who fears standing before Allah Azza wa Jal. If you don't fear that you're going to stand before Allah, you'll never make tawbah. You'll be safe. You feel it's not from Allah, arham ar rahimin Khalas. But when you fear, because do you know if your sins have been forgiven? La. You hope. But certainty? We have certainty in the promise of Allah. As well. If you seek forgiveness, He will what? Forgive you. I hope I'm from them. I hope I might. When I ask Allah for forgiveness, I have 
ikhlas. This person came and said, I have done something deserving of punishment. Establish it upon me. Ask ourselves now, us. I do something haram and I'm deserving to be lashed, for example. Am I going to take myself to the mahkam and say, lash me now, I deserve this? This was the way the sahaba, the iman was... There's no comparison. So they established their prayer and he would continue to ask the messenger of Allah, I've done this. Establish the ruling upon me. Like punish me. Until they finished the salah, for some left, the Sahaba, they followed him to see what is he going to say to this man. He continued to ask, he said, أَفَلَا شَهِدْتَ الصَّلَاةَ مَعَنَا أَوْ خَرَجْتَ مِنْ بَيْتُ أَحْسَنْتَ الْوَدُوْ You left your home and you, you perfected your wudu and then you witnessed the salah with us. فَقَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ Allah has forgiven you. Now I'm looking for an ayah in the Quran that is short that mentions the meaning of this hadith. Who knows? Now, إن الحسنات يذهبن السيئات هذا دلالة على رحمة الله من أعظم دلالة this is from the best evidences of Allah's mercy. Indeed, the good actions will erase the bad ones. So whatever you do of evil, do something of goodness. The reason why we have to truly reflect about Yawm Al-Qiyamah, because from that day, is going to be established your abode for eternity compared to a temporary short time in life. If you reflect, the average lifespan is how long? 60, 70 years old. Now, how much of that is spent sleeping? At least a third or half. How many years do you have left? 30, 40, yes? طيب. Before you are mukallaf, before you are responsible, before you reach the age of balooq, let's say, على العموم, in 15. Those who haven't got the signs, a moment 15. So, how much years does that leave us now? We take away 15, we got how much left? 15, 25. Imagine Allah will give you Jannah just for 25 years. Allah will may make you deserving of the punishment of the hellfire for following desires for 15, 25 years. What does Allah say about the people of Jahannam? He knows the meaning of Ahqaba. Who's memorized Surah al -Nabha? Who hasn't memorized Surah al -Nabha? Don't be shy, no problem. You're not, you won't be blamed with me. Inshallah. But your homework is to start memorizing Quran. The Quran is going to be the biggest benefit to you al Qiyamah. Or the biggest proof against you. And we ask Allah to make it a proof for us. Allah says in this surah, لا بثين فيها أحقاب The Sahaba, they mention Al-Hukub. أحقاب is a plural of Hukub. Hukub is one. Now Hukub, they say this time period is one year. One year as we count one year. That has how many months? 12 months. Each month has 30 days. But they say one day is equivalent to a thousand years. That's hukum. One day is equivalent to a thousand years. And a huq of one is one year as we count it, 12 months as we count it, 30 days as we count it, but each day is equivalent to a thousand years. Can you even count this? That's one. Allah says, 
plural, غير معدود. It's not even counted. And this is another way that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives al-wa'id, that threat of punishment in the Quran of the reality of the hereafter, because people measure things in this life according to time. They rush the salah because they say they don't have time. You see, they may not pay the cat because they're not calculating time. Or they are those who chase the dunya so much they don't even think about time. Why? Because they think yasabu anna malahu akhlaqa. They believe that their wealth is going to make them live for eternity. So the reality that we are establishing is that death is certain for every single one of us, and there is. No, no third place, place is either Jannah, Jannah or Jahannam. But the reality is we have to remind ourselves of the Sa'ah. Because we mentioned there are a number of evidences, we only mentioned a few of them, as a glimpse that mention how close this time is. But the ulama they mentioned, don't spend your time trying to figure out when it's going to happen. This is waste of time. It's not for you to go home now and say, let me try and calculate when the Yom al Qiyamah is going to be. Because we mentioned Qiyamah is of two types. As we mentioned, When a person dies, their final hour is established. When we say, Al-Iman bil Yom al Akhir, Huwa Al-Iman bi Kulli ma sayaka'u ba'd al Maut. It is Iman. In everything that is going to happen after death. Everything that is going to happen after death. From them is questions of the grave. What's your name? Now, Yunus, mashallah. Do you know the questions of the grave? Now, now, not what is your book. Good. You know, you know the, the answer, answer to all those questions, questions right? right? Who, Who doesn't, doesn't know the answer, answer to those questions? questions? We, we all know. But the, the reality, reality is, is what we, we know at that moment in time. Because, because some, some people, people, when that time, time comes, depending, depending on how we live in this life, life they're going to say, huh? Huh? They're going to say, Sheikh Huthaymin, he mentioned when the servant someone says, ha, ha, it shows that they are trying to remember something. Something that they once knew. Saying, ha, ha. But then they say, I heard people saying something, so I said it. Some of us are like this. Some of us, unfortunately, our Islam is because we know if I leave it, my parents will be sad with me. That's the reality. The reason I say I'm still a Muslim, because I know if I don't, if I say I don't believe anymore, who's going to be upset with me? Not Allah as well. They're not thinking about this. They say, my parents, my uncles, my aunties, it's shame on my family. But this is the reality that we have to remind ourselves with. Because you see this dunya, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the Jannah and he sent Jibreel alayhi salam to look at it, Jibreel said, there is no one who will know of this place except they're going to enter it. But then he was surrounded by hardship, surrounded by trial and tribulation and difficulty. Then he said, I fear no one will enter it. Then when he showed him the hellfire, he said, no one will know of this place except they will never go there. Why? Because of the severity. Who knows the lowest punishment in the hellfire? Boiling rock on your sandals. What's it going to do? Have you seen a pot of soup when it bubbles? That moment when it's ready to eat and it's bubbling in. This is what, what your brain, brain will do. You can't even imagine it in reality. But that's the least punishment. 
in the hellfire. So Jibreel said, no, no one will know of this place. He said, they will never enter. I will do everything that they can do to make sure they stay away from it. But then it was surrounded by desires. Shahwat. Then he said, I fear everyone is, everyone is going to enter the hellfire. So he mentions, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ النفس, النفس, النفس. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قَالْ إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُوءٍ The most important jihad is jihad al-nafs. That you strive against your own desires, especially as young people. What glad tidings did the Prophet Muhammad give you as young men? Who knows? The shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The shade, some say arsh. But then, some say a shade that Allah will place there. Because they say if you say the arsh, that means the sun is above Allah azza wa jal. Wallahu a'lam. Ikhtilaf bayna ahl al But we say a shade that Allah is going to place there. Place for? Who? A young person who was raised upon obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is going to benefit you when? That you'll be granted shade that's going to protect you from what? The sun that's going to be brought close to the ibad. O milayn. The sun is going to be one or two miles away from your head on Yom Al-Qiyamah. Can you imagine? To the point that the people will be drowning in their sweat. Ala qadr al-ma'asi. Ala qadr al-dunubihim. According to the level of their sin. That they will be sweating so much. From their sin they will drown in their own sweat. That is the reality of Yom Al-Qiyamah. The thing is, sometimes we look, as even young people, we, we say, this is too serious, you know. I can't imagine this now, but how much people do you know, they haven't passed the age of 15? Where we start to believe death is something that we're, it's not going to happen, I've got time. And this is how shaitan tricks the people, especially the young now. The young generation are living the hardest time that we can even imagine. And sometimes us as elders, the mistakes that we make is when we see the behaviors of the young ones, we get upset with them. But you see their behavior is actually a cry for help. They don't know what to do. They may not have the knowledge. Some of us, we teach them the Qur'an, but we don't teach them the tafsir of the Qur'an. So they memorize Qur'an, but they don't actually know what they are carrying. So when you see them misbehaving or straying from the straight path, you need to help them. You need to bring them close. Of the things that I'm happy to see in this masjid especially, is young people. That's why I'm getting you involved, because you, you don't know your responsibility. As a Muslim, whether you like it or not, you are a role model. Whether you, ha you don't have a choice. Someone is going to follow you. Someone is going to look at you. Whether it's a younger sibling, someone in your area, someone is watching you. But you will only see the fruits of the goodness that you show an example when? Yom al -Qiyam. But now we're in a time of fitting, where we have to remind ourselves and the young the reality of Yom al -Qiyam. I had a younger brother, he passed away 10 years ago now, upon other than Islam. Allah guided me to Islam, alhamdulillah, I'm the only Muslim in my family. But my brother, he had his life ahead of him, as they say. The day after his death, he got a letter scholarship to go play basketball in America. You think this is the life, isn't it? It's the dunya. He's going to make it pro, professional. But sometimes, our objective is only attached to this worldly life. And when it gets cut short, you have nothing else. That's it. Your story comes to an end. Your legacy is 
over. But you see the likes of Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah. Who here has not heard this name? Everyone. And this will be the case until Yawm Al Qiyamah. Why does he have this legacy? Because of ikhlas. Because he done something that he knew would benefit him when? In his hereafter. Young, Young brothers, are you all memorizing Quran? Quran? Okay, okay, tell me one, one hadith, hadith about the virtue, virtue specifically, specifically of the Hafid of Quran. Glad tidings to the Hafid of the Quran. Good, other than this? Other than this? Not necessarily. Because Quran, Hujjatun Lak or Alaik. There are some people who memorize the Quran, but it's a proof against them. Now, it's not like literally a ladder, but it says, يُقَالُوا لِصَاحِدِ Quran. It's going to be said to the companion of the Quran. اِقْرَأْ وَارْتَقِي وَرَتِّلْ كَمَا كُنْتَ تُرَتِّلْ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ آخِرَ مَنْزِلَتِكْ عِنْدَ آخِرِ آيَةٍ تَقْرَأُهَا this is glad tidings to the Huffat. So if you haven't heard this hadith and you're memorizing Quran, make sure you learn this hadith and you remind yourself of this all the time. Because here the Prophet said it's going to be said on Yawm Al Qiyamah to the companion of the Quran. Sahib Al Quran, not Al Qari', Sahib. The one who takes the Quran as a companion. And Nabi Sallam. لما سئلت عائشة عنها أن خلقه أن خلقه when عائشة was asked about his manners she said what he's the Quran that's a صاحب القرآن the one who learns it and acts upon it this is a صاحب of the Quran on يوم القيامة this is glad tidings to the حفاظ of the Quran it's going to be said to them read and ascend and recite as you recited in this life i.e. this was your practice in the dunya in the world life, he was a person who read the Quran, memorized the Quran, recited the Quran. It's going to be said, read and ascend. And your last place in Jannah is where? With the last ayah that you read. The last ayah you read. The Quran. Yati yawm al qiyamah shafi'an li ashabihi. The Quran comes on the day of judgment. As an interceder for his companions. Imagine the Quran coming and arguing your case before Allah Azza wa Jal. Pleading with Allah that you enter where? Al-Jannah. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi complained. He said, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذِ الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا There is no way we can prepare for Yawm Al-Qiyamah if we have neglected the Quran. We can talk about anything we want in this dunya, but if it doesn't go back to the Quran, we have lost focus. The Quran gives you guidance to everything. Because in the Quran, Allah tells you to go to the Sunnah. So whatever is mentioned generally in the Quran, it's going to be mentioned detailed in the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So my advice to the young, memorize the Quran whilst you're young, before you're busy, and then spend the rest of your life preserving it. Because this life is short. Nothing else matters except for the actions. Because Allah mentions, Alimat nafsun ma qaddamat wa akhara. This is about Yawm al-Qiyamah. You see, when that day comes, you're going to know what did you do? What did you forget to do? What was you deficient in? You're going to know everything. That's the severity of that day. On that day, you're going to forget about your parents. You're going to forget about your spouses, your children. You're only going to be concerned about who? Yourself. Imagine, Firar. On that day, the person is going to flee from, imagine your brother, someone you've grown up with all the time. 
your closest friend. If you was a twin, you will run away opposite direction, as if you don't know this person. Your mum, you won't even look at your mum, you'll turn away. You'll run from every single person that you know, you're not even going to acknowledge them for a second. Everyone's going to be busy with themselves. Even Adam alayhi salam on the hadith of intercession is going to say, Nafsi, Nafsi. So what about other than them? This is the reality. Nothing is going to matter except for you and what you have put forth for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why in the hadith al Qudsi of where Allah as Allah subhanahu wa mentions, Ya ibadi inni haramt al dhulma ala nafsi. At the end of the hadith it says, Inna ma hi a'malukum uhsiha lakum. In this hadith it mentions, it's your actions that we account for you. It mentions, فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ Whoever finds goodness, then praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَا but whoever finds other than this, then do not blame other except for yourself. You only have yourself to blame. The Prophet Muhammad has mentioned it's not your actions that will enter you into Jannah. Rather, it is what? Rahmatullah. In other hadith, we just mentioned about your actions. فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ This is because of what? Their actions. So how do we bring this together? It's not your actions that bring you into Jannah. It's the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. How do we bring them together? I hope I'm fair. What else? It's from Allah's mercy you're doing these actions. It's from Allah's mercy you are even doing these actions. مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Whoever Allah wants good for, He grants him understanding of the religion. You think understanding is only knowledge? If that knowledge does not come with action, what's the benefit? So say, Alimun bi ilmihi lam ya'malan. Mu'adzabun min qabli ulbad al wathan. The poet, he mentions this. The personal knowledge who does not act upon his knowledge is going to be punished before who? The worship of the idols. The one who has knowledge but does not act upon that knowledge, when they stand before Allah Azza wa Jal, they'll be thrown into the hellfire before those who worship idols. So the goodness you find yourself upon is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَعَلَيْنَا الْقِيَامِ بِالشُّكْرِ We have to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we're going to mention some circumstances of the different types of people from the believers and the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised them in relation to Yawm al qiyam but the reality of this day as why I mentioned in the beginning who knows the meaning of Iman because the kuffar they have one thing in common all of them reject this time all of them find a way that they don't have to think about this time they don't want to think about this time So when you say death, they get scared. But as for the believer, what did the Prophet have told you to do? Aksiru dhikra hadimu ladat. Be abundant in remembering the destroyer of pleasures. What is the destroyer of pleasures? Death. When a person dies, what has happened? Their final hour has been established. 
And the first part is the dwelling of the grave. The first part is the dwelling of the grave. And each and every single one of us has a seat in the hellfire and a seat in Jannah. Depending on how we live this life, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, reflects which chair you're going to be taking. As I mentioned, if we all have a seat in the hellfire and a seat in Jannah, that is already prepared for us. Allah has given us free will. But our free will is under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes you see a person, from what's apparent, they're righteous. You saw them in the masjid. But then they die in a way that was displeasing to Allah Azza wa Jal. Maybe they die associated partners with Allah Azza wa Jal. Only Allah SWT knows what's in a person's heart. We only see what is apparent. So the most important thing for us to attain the mercy of Allah SWT is to have ikhlas. In all of your affairs, you have to make sure you're doing it only for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You're young, you're memorizing Quran. Who are you memorizing for? Allah Azza wa Jal. Not your parents. The reason you're obeying your parents is for who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to teach this to the children as well. Because if you teach them something that is short-lived, then once that thing is gone, illa man rahim Allah, it also goes. If you tell them, do it for me, are you going to be here forever? No. So as soon as you're gone, maybe they say, I'm going to do something else now. But when you teach them, you're memorizing Quran for Allah, is it not for me? When you reward them, you say, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it is. Allah huwa razzaq You always have to attach them to Allah azza wa and the hereafter. And you have to teach them, this life, darul ibtila. The dunya is a place of test, a place of calamity. It's not always going to go smoothly. It's not always going to be easy. You're not always going to get what you want. But, but those, those you are going to truly benefit The final result The end result is for the people of At-Taqwa So it's important That we remind ourselves Of the severity Of this day But at the same time We have to have hope The mu'min combines between hope and fear equally. equally but there's a time when you have to have more hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than fear when is that on your deathbed what's the evidence no risk why I ask this because I want to like nurture us upon trying our best so when we say something have evidence for it even if you don't have evidence doesn't mean you cannot say it if you know you can still say it but we have to have high ambition that we know things with evidence because that is knowledge knowledge is knowing the truth with it's evidence and the person says don't let any of you die except that they have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so at that time you have to have more hope of Allah's mercy, that Allah will forgive you, that you'll get a place in Jannah. You are to have more hope in this than having fear. But no doubt we have to have fear. Why do we fear Allah Azza wa Where is the fruits of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, it refrains you from doing sin. When we reflect, you have punishment that is restricted to this life. Now, for example, if a person steals, what happens? Their hand is gone. Who's likely to steal then? No one. If you know that this is going to happen, you steal, you're going to lose your hand. You kill, you're going to lose your life. 
you ruin, you ruin your, your family, family home by, by committing zina, zina you're going to lose your life. life. What, what is, is the likeliness of you falling into that sin? Tayyip. You'll, You'll leave it off. off. So, so, you know, there's, there's a, a sin that is very easy for us to fall into, into but the, the punishment, punishment is severe. severe. And the, the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad swore it during his travel of Laylatul Isra wal Mi'raj. Ghiba wal Namima. Backbiting and slandering. Not safeguarding the tongue. Very easy to fall into sin with the tongue. But when the Prophet Muhammad was with Jibreel and he passed by a people, they were scratching their faces and their chests with nails out of copper. Can you imagine doing this to yourself? You, you might, might hurt, hurt yourself, yourself just picking, picking off a scab. scab. It, it hurts, hurts a lot sometimes. Or you had, had surgery, surgery stitches, you have to remove it. It's going to hurt. You don't want to do it. So imagine tearing off your face, tearing apart your chest. Why? Because you spoke about someone else. Just for using your tongue. No benefit. But what makes us fear doing it now? Because we know the punishment. So, so there, there are, are some punishments, punishments that are restricted to this dunya and there are some that are mentioned in the hereafter that is evident this thing is a major sin. So if us to fear Allah the most in this life, we also have to make ourselves aware of the punishments. The punishments for our actions and the sins. And this comes from either your heart, your tongue, or your hand. So there are some punishments that I, made, that I mentioned specifically regarding Yom Al Qiyamah, the hereafter, and some that a person may receive a punishment now. But if you do not learn the punishments, how are you going to fear Allah SWT? How are you going to prepare yourself for this day? The reality on this day, there's going to be two types of people. You're going to have Ahlul Jannah wa Ahlul Nar. People of Jannah, that Allah described, You see on that day, their faces are glowing, illuminated. Why? Because they're going to be looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know your heart from its fitrah is yearning to see Allah azza wa jalla. You've heard so much about Allah. You know Allah by his names and attributes. Don't you want to see Allah? Isn't that the, the next thing we're waiting for to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The biggest ni'mah that exists. There is nothing greater than seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of the kuffar, none of Ahlul Nal are going to see Allah azza wa jalla. They will not see Allah's face. But this is for Ahlul Iman, Ahlul Jannah. Specific reward for them. Do you not want this reward? So, so now, now we have to go back to the Quran. Because as I said, there's not, we, this is something you can spend years talking about. There's so much on this topic alone. Because this is the whole da'wah of Islam. The whole da'wah of Islam is knowing that you came from Allah, He created you. And you're going to return to Allah Azza wa Jalla. But you choose how. You choose which state you return to Allah in. Do you return while he's pleased with you? Or do you return in a way that you deserve? His punishment. This is your choice. Who gave it to you? Allah Azza wa Jalla. That's why you mentioned about the hadith. You're not going to enter Jannah with your actions. But you're going to end by Allah's mercy. Every single day you ask Allah for he died. Every single day. 17 times a day at least. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim you're asking Allah for the straight path. Allah gives a general description in Surah Al-Fatiha. Sirat al-ladina na'amta alayhim. The path of those you have bestowed your favor upon. But Allah mentions, Ula'ika ma'a al-ladina an'am Allahu alayhim min al-nabiyyin wa siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin. وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا 
You know, subhanAllah, when you truly reflect on this, we've heard about the Prophet Muhammad We haven't met him. The Sahaba lived with the Messenger of Allah. And during that time, the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that he was yearning to meet his brothers. When? Yawm al-Qiyamah. Yawm al-Qiyamah. The Sahaba are like, are we not, are we not your brothers? He says, Bal antum ashabi. Rabbi, you are my companions. The brothers of the Prophet Muhammad are those you come after. Do you not want to meet the Messenger of Allah? He wants to meet you. But we have to be of those who Glad tidings are to those who believed in me and they haven't seen you. So if you want to be with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu you have to follow this guidance. Allah mentions you will be with those whom Allah has favored from the prophets, messengers, the righteous, the Siddiqeen, Abu Bakr Siddiq, we've heard about him so much, you're going to get to see him. And the righteous of all of those who have preceded. This is the best companionship you can ever have. The Sahaba used to say, regarding death, some of us now, when we think about death, it's like, subhanAllah, we go into depression. We start to grieve. Deep sorrow. But the Salafi will say, غَدًا نَلْقِي أَحِبَّهُ Muhammadan wa suhba. This was the way of the salaf. He said, tomorrow we're going to meet the beloved. Who's the beloved? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and his companions. Now the question is, can you be with them if you don't live accordingly? La. If you want to be with them, yawm al-qiyamah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, inna aqrabakum minni matlisan. يوم القيامة أحسنكم خلقا. Those who will be closest to me يوم القيامة, the day of judgment, you want to be close to the messenger of Allah. You have to have what? Good manners. The best of mannerisms. Where is that in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم? Another narration. إن قربكم مني مجلس يوم القيامة أكثركم علي صلاة. Those who be closest to me, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Do we not want to be close to the Messenger of Allah? Alayhi salatu wasalam. Those who send salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam the most. My question to you. Who sends salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu more than the people of Hadith? No one. No one sends salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam more than someone who busies themselves with hadith. Kama yuhfad al-Qur'an as-sunnah tuhfad. Just as you memorize Qur'an, you need to memorize the sunnah. Because the sunnah is also revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just as the Qur'an is going to benefit you, if you act upon it, the sunnah is going to benefit you if you act upon it. So, there are ways that we can gain closeness to those who are most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala easily. But it's upon us to go out of our way to learn them. In preparation for this day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described in a number of ways. And he mentions from them, يَوْمَ وَيَوْمَ نُصَيِّرُ الْجِبَالَ وَتَرَ الْأَرْضَ بَارِزَةً وَحَشَرْنَاهُمْ فَلَمْ نُغَادِرْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this day when the mountains are going to become as if they're dust and liquid. From afar you'll think it's water. The way Allah is going to make the mountains crumble into dust, a person that looks from afar will see it as a mirage. It looks like water. And the earth is going to be changed. It's not going to be the same land that you see. 
and everyone be on one plane land, all waiting. And it says the one day that you're going to be waiting is going to be the miqdar of what? 50,000 years. But they mentioned for Ahlul Iman, this time period will feel like the wait between Salat al-Dhuhr and Asr. For the people of Iman, that waiting period will feel like waiting between Dhuhr and Asr. Everything is easy for the believers. Everything is easy for the believers from the moment your soul is taken. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbi. That's, That's the, the first, first time, time, the first address. From you receive that, that then you're upon goodness. That, that is the, the first, first glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It starts then. And then again, when we're waiting on that time to be held accountable, it's as if it's 50,000 years. But for the believers, as if they were waiting between Dhuhr and Asr. It's mentioned about this day when we're raised before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that everyone is going to be naked, no clothes, barefooted, nothing wearing on their feet, exactly as Allah created them from the first day. When Aisha heard this, she mentioned man and woman, they're going to see each other. The Prophet Muhammad said that day is more severe for anyone to even be concerned. No one will look other than at themselves. You can't even imagine this. In this life, we all get shy and say, Look at this person, they need to put clothes on. Imagine in Yom Al Qiyamah, nothing like you was the first day you was born, no clothes, nothing. But you're not even going to look left or right. You will not look left. No right. The only thing you're going to be worried about is what's going to happen to me? What is going to happen to me? Am I going to Jannah or am I going to not? We don't know yet. But that's going to be your concern. That is how severe that day is. When Allah described this day, when you see the people when you see the people as if they're drunk we see the drunk people how they behave here lose their mind but they're not drunk why are they behaving like this because they have seen the reality the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a person lose their mind as if they are drunkard now this is the reality not, Not because, because of, of anything they've drunk, drunk. From, from fear. From, from fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But again, what does Allah mention? Inna alladheena qalu rabbuna allahu thumma istaqamu tatanazzalu alayhimu almalaika alla takhafu wa la tahzanu wa abashiru bil jannati allati kuntum tu'adu. This is for us to ponder on now. Those who say, my Lord is who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thumma istiqamu. We have to have istiqama. What is istiqama? To be steadfast. To uphold Islam. Hatta al-mamat. Until we return back to Allah azza wa jal. The angels will come and they will say, do not be scared. Do not be fearful. Do not be in a state of grieving or sorrow. But rejoice with what? The jannah that you have been promised. And that's, and that's why, why when one of the Sahaba came to the Prophet Muhammad and asked him for advice, what did he say? Qul amantu billah thumma istiqim. Say, I believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. And then, have istiqama. And then have istiqama. Now, as a means of encouragement, I just want to mention examples of the believers on Yom Al-Qiyamah and what Allah SWT has promised them. And for a person to reflect, 
to reflect on this and what can I do to ensure I'm one of these people? What can I do myself to ensure that I'm going to be one of these people that have been mentioned? And there is a number of examples, but we'll mention that which is most befitting, inshallah ta'ala. And from them, the first of the examples that I mentioned, حَالَ الَّذِينَ يُسِرُّونَ عَلَى الْمُعْسِرِينَ وَيَسْتَرُونَ عَلَى الْمُذْنِبِينَ وَيُفَرِّجُونَ عَلَى الْمَكْرُوبِينَ This is the condition regarding those who make it easy for the one who has a debt. And also the one who conceals the sins of another Muslim. And the one who helps remove a hardship from a person. As it came in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sahih Muslim and Abi Hurairah Radhaan, man nafasa an mu'minin kurbatan min kurub al-dunya, nafasa Allahu anhu kurbatan min kurub al-yom al-qiyamah. Whoever relieves a believer from hardship, from the hardships of this life, Allah will relieve from them from the hardships of yom al-qiyamah. Wa man yassara ala mu'sirin, and whoever facilitates for one who is in debt. Someone who is in debt, someone who helps a person in debt. Yassar Allahu alayhi fi dunya wal akhirah. Allah will make their affairs easy in this life and in the hereafter. So sometimes the action, the reward is not only in the hereafter. That your reward is in both life. This life and in the hereafter. وَمَنْ سَتَرَ مُسْلِمًا سَتَرَهُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ and this is very important also. Whoever conceals the affairs of a Muslim, Allah will conceal the affairs in this life and in the hereafter. Of the things that I warn you against, especially young people, if you are people of the Quran, stay away from social media. The Prophet said, Kullu ummati mu'afa illa al-mujahideen. The Prophet said, All of my ummah is going to be forgiven, except for those who expose their own selves. This is what they do on social media. They expose their own sins to the whole world. Or you have people who say, I want the world to hear my voice for Quran. And again, I say, Iyakum. Because the Prophet said, Aksharu munafiqi ummati qurra'uha. The majority of the hypocrites from my ummah are the Quran reciters. Majority of the hypocrites of my ummah are those who recite the Quran. Don't be of these people who seek any praise from anyone. Because there's going to come a time when we stand before Allah Azza wa Jal. A person who says, I learned Quran, I learned Islam to teach. For the sake of Allah, Allah doesn't say, La, kathabt. you lied. You did it so people can praise you. And give you titles. And, and, and hold you in lofty status. Allah's going to say, you received your reward. The same thing when it comes to, as we mentioned about making things easy for people. Allah says, says, Ya ayu ladina amanu la tubtilu sadaqatikum bil manna wal adha. Bil manna wal adha. O you who believe, do not destroy, do not invalidate your acts of charity with men wal adha. Al man is when I say, for example, I helped you, you was in need. I mean, I say, Akhi, don't forget, you know, I had your back, you got to get me now. Or don't forget what I did for you, you know, like to make you always feel lower than me. Al Adha, I say, Yeah, Ikhwan, you know, I helped him. He was in need. He was miskeen, he was on his face. I lifted him up. He couldn't pay his rent. I paid it for him. I tell everyone, this is Al Adha. And Allah warned us from this. This is how you destroy all your acts of goodness. So even these things that we mentioned for you to attain this status in Yawm Al-Qiyamah, it has to be done only for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. If you have the ability to relieve someone of hardship, don't say it has to be someone from my family, it has to be a friend. Do it for whoever you can. Anyone you can relieve hardship for. Your intention is to what? Return, get that return of this reward and mention in the hadith. I'm doing this because I only want Allah to relieve me from the difficulty of Yom al Qiyam. Even what's also mentioned regarding the likes of people that relieve people of debts and hardship. It mentioned there was a man, 
And he used to, kind of yudayin, yudayin and nas, he used to give people loans. But then he said to his son, if anyone comes who is unable to pay, then pardon them, forgive them. Say they don't have to pay anything. You see, لَعَلَّ اللَّهِ anna That Allah may pardon us. And I mentioned that was the case, that this person was entered into Jannah because Allah pardoned him. Why? Because he pardoned everyone who owed him money. As Muslims, we should remind ourselves this life is temporary. Yes, you may have loaned someone money. They owe you, it's your right. But ask yourself, do I need this money like this? Am I seeking this life? Do I have the means within my capacity to say, don't worry about it. For the sake of Allah, it was a gift. If you can do that, do it to be of those that Allah will pardon you al Qiyamah. You don't know that might be the one action. The one action that you do, and Allah says, this person is from the people of Jannah. Just like the story of Imam Abu Dawood. Who knows his story of buying Jannah for one dirham? Who hasn't heard this story? You've all heard it? You heard it? Don't be shy, you know, there's no shyness in knowledge. Imam Abu Dawood was traveling. And when he was on the ship, he heard someone sneeze and say, Alhamdulillah. So he rented a smaller boat from the ship just to sail back to say, Ya Hamakallah. This is not getting the bus. This is not getting an Uber. This is sailing back just to say, Ya Hamakallah. Just as he heard it, he could have shouted, Ya Hamakallah, maybe. Hoping that he would hear him back. They ask him, Why do you do this for? He says, La'allahu da'wa mustaja. He said, maybe his, his supplication will be answered. Because imagine why we have to always have intention behind our actions. Someone says, Alhamdulillah. They're praising Allah Azza wa Jal. And Alhamdulillah, what does this mean? Athana ala Allah bi asma'ihi wa sifati bi yani bil kamal. Is that you're praising Allah by his names and his attributes that with perfection. And then you, the person says to you, Ya Hamakallah. May Allah bestow his mercy upon you. It's so beautiful, they make dua for you. Again, Yahdikum Allah wa Yuslihu Balakum. May Allah guide you. Guidance is of two types guiding you to Islam, then guiding you to that which is beloved to Allah Azza wa from the actions that will make you from the Sabiqeen al Awwalin. That is what is guidance. Rectify all of your affairs. So he said, imagine that. Hopefully, that dua will be answered. So he said, that's why I went back. They're all traveling. A person wakes up in the night saying, Ishtara Abu Dawood al Jannah bi dirham. They kept shouting. They woke up from a dream that they saw that Imam Abu Dawood had bought Jannah for one dirham. Because you don't know what action is going to enter into Jannah. Like you don't know what sin is going to make you deserving of the punishment. So any of these things is for you to reflect because everyone's situation is different. What can I do of these things to attain this reward in Yawm al The second, the, the third, Hal al-Shuhada. Hal al-Shuhada, the condition of those who die fighting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to be called brave, not for social media, not to be famous. They're doing it to raise Islam. As it's supposed to be done according to Quran and Sunnah. Not the way of the extremists, not the way of the misguided groups. According to the Quran, and the Sunnah. And today we have Jihad bil ilm fighting with knowledge, fighting against the doubts that they try to give into the youth's heads. Those who try to war against the Quran and Sunnah, we defend the Quran and the Sunnah. This is all a way of fighting in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
But the one who dies and he's shaheed is mentioned. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called فيما إن ترمذي وابن ماجة والشيخ الباني ذكر أنه صحيح للشهيد عند الله سبع خصال فد الشهيد وب الله سبحانه وتعالى سبعين سبيشال ثينغز فد يغفر له في أول دفعة من دمه the first instant his blood is spilled he is forgiven immediately he is forgiven for his sins then he mentions ويرى مقعده من الجنة and then he will be shown his seat in Jannah. This is Bushra. He will be shown his seat in Jannah. And he will be adorned with the adornments of Iman. We love to hear this. <laughs> Some of us, we can't have more than one in this life. It's difficult. The women are worrying us here. So we are now dependent upon Hur al Ain. Nasallah Hur al Ain. Amen. They won't have the jealousy in the hereafter, so we can ask for it. Alhamdulillah. What can they do to us in this life, you know? <laughs> this is jihad. We want Hur al Ain. So, yes, they'll be given 72 wives of the Hur al Ain. 72, mashallah. We can't even imagine. But the heart is yelling for it. The heart is, it wants it. وَيُجَارُ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ They'll be saved from the punishment of the hellfire. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, Had I not feared that you would stop burying one another, I would ask Allah to allow you to hear the punishment of the grave. That's how severe the punishment of the grave is. That if you could hear it, you wouldn't even bury one another. You end up like roadkill. You would leave them on the street because you wouldn't want them to go through that. That is the reality. Subhanallah. But when you die for the sake of Allah, you'll be saved from this. And also when the trumpet, the final trumpet is blown and the fear that comes from that, you'll also be saved from this. And they'll be given a crown of honor. This is all for the person who fights for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Al Yaquta minhu khayru min al dunya wa ma fiha. And the jewels of that crown are better than the dunya and all that is in it. Wa yushfa'u fi sabi'in. Wa yushfa'u fi sabi'in insan insan min ahli baytihi. And you also be able to intercede for seventy of those of his family. Sometimes Sabaeen, Sabaeen is mentioned, ليس على حد المحدود. Sometimes these numbers are mentioned, not to show it's restricted to this, but it shows kathura. It shows that they're able to intercede for many people. It doesn't mean that it's restricted to that number of men that is mentioned. The examples we have of this, so we can understand this principle, you have the hadith of Ashra Mubashirin Abil Jannah, 10 that are promised Jannah. Is there only 10 who is promised Jannah? No. no. So, so sometimes numbers when it's mentioned doesn't mean it's restricted to that. Also, from these people, the, the condition of the one who either touched the black stone or kissed the black stone. This black stone, it has a tongue and two lips. In another narration, it mentions, it has two eyes. And it's going to bear witness on Yawm Al-Qiyamah for everyone who touched it or kissed it. So, this is glad talents for one who performs Hajj and Umrah. The black stone is going to bear witness for your presence that you was there. And if you're not able to touch it, or you're not able to kiss it, because you don't want to harm the people, then give salams. It will bear witness for you. We are all in need of this. If you can't make hajj, make umrah. Do it. Spend your wealth for whose sake? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he mentions, Halu ahlil bala. Halu 
Ahlul Bala, the condition of those who go through calamity. You know, sometimes you go through hardship and you need something to give your heart that peace of mind to make you rest assured. There is nothing better than the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing better than the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet says, Ajaban li amr al mu'min, kulluhu khayr. Amazing is the affair of the believer. All of it is good. All of your affairs are good. Something bad happens to you, you are patient, it's good for you. Something good happens to you, you're grateful, it's good for you. But here in this hadith specifically, it mentions in the Tirmidhi, يَوَدُّ أَهْلُ الْعَافِيَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ حِينَ يُعْتَى أَهْلُ الْبَلَاءَ الثَّوَابَ لَوْ أَنَّ جُلُودَهُمْ كَانَتْ قُرِّدَتْ فِي الدُّنْيَا بِالْمَقَارِيدِ it mentions, when the people who do not go through calamity see the reward given to those who were tested with calamity and hardship, they would wish that their skin in the life of this dunya was cut with scissors to pieces. Why? Because of the abundant reward that one would get. Can you imagine cutting your own skin now into pieces with scissors? لا يتحمل أبدا you will not be able to bear this with your finger, let alone all of your skin. But when they see the great reward for those who are patient, those who are patient and seek the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would wish they could come back and cut their skin to pieces with scissors. This life that we're living is a life of testing calamity. A person does not seek raha, does not seek rest here, does not seek their jannah here. As the Prophet Muhammad mentioned, Ad dunya sijn al mu'min wa jannah al kafir. This world life that we are living is a prison for the believer. They're not, they don't want to be here. They want to go to jannah. They want what Allah has promised in the hereafter. As for the disbeliever who rejects this, this is their jannah. That's why they spend their time trying to build it. They waste their whole life with a mortgage trying to build their jinn in this life and they live in a miserable way. Why? Because they've turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you go through hardship, don't think Allah is punishing you. Maybe Allah is saving you from all hardship of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. When you seek the reward, we can't even imagine the reward that they've received for those who do not get calamity for them to wish, wish the likes of this on themselves. Just, Just like, like we don't know, we can't imagine the punishment, punishment that makes the kafir say, I wish I was turaba. To become to dust, dust, nothing, nothing when, when they, they see the reality. reality. And, and this is what we have to remind ourselves in times of hardship and times of ease. That we always have to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. was also mentioned حال الرحماء يوم القيامة وجاء في البخاري عند أدب المفرد من رحم ولو ذبيحة عصفور رحمه الله يوم القيامة whoever shows mercy even if it was upon the sacrifice of a sparrow a small tiny bird Allah will show mercy upon them يوم القيامة Man la yarham la yurham. Those who are not merciful will not receive mercy. Wa hadha min sifat al-mu'mineen. Ruhama baynahum. They are those who are merciful among themselves. Also was mentioned. This is for those who are wealthy, mashallah. Ahlu sadaqa. Those who donate the most, mashallah. من ترك اللباس تواضعا. Those who leave off buying expensive clothes out of humility before Allah عز وجل so they spend on the masajid. Masha, your masjid is is very nice, Allah mubarak. But this is from you. The government don't want you to have this place and it to be nice. When it's very cold time, the heating is from you guys. Spending for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla, seeking your reward where? Yawm al-Qiyamah. 
So here, those who leave off buying expensive clothes, and they have the ability to do so, why? Out of humility before Allah Azza wa Jal, it mentions, مَنْ تَرَكَ اللِّبَاسِ تَوَاضُعًا لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ يَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ دَعَاهُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَلَى رُؤُوسِ الْخَلَائِقِ حَتَّى يُخَيِّرُهُ مِنْ أَيِّ حُلَلِ الْإِيمَانِ شَهَاءَ يَلْبِسُهَا It mentioned, the one who leaves off the expensive garments and the likes out of humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment Allah is going to call him before all of mankind and allow him to choose whatever he wills from the clothing, the adornments of the iman that he will wear for the people of Jannah. This is all glad tidings. But sometimes you don't realize which avenue of goodness you can attain that is specific to you unless you find out about it. Not everyone can do exactly the same actions. Not everyone's a hafid of Quran. Not everyone has wealth. Everyone does what they're able to. And the Prophet said, اِتَّقُوا النَّارِ وَلَوْ بِشَقِّ التَّمَرِ Don't belittle any action. He said, save yourself from the hellfire, even if it's with half of a date. Do whatever you have the ability to do so. What's also mentioned, it's mentioned in, in the Bukhari Muslim, بَيْنَا رَجُلٌ وَاقِفْ مَعَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ بِعَرَفَةً إِذْ وَقَعَ عَنْ رَاحِلَتِهِ فوقسته فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اغسلوه بماء وسدر وكفنوه في ثوبيه ولا تخمروا رأسه فإن الله يبعثه يوم القيامة يلبي Here it mentions that during the time of Hajj they were standing at Arafah and a man he fell from his riding beast and he broke, he broke his neck from this and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, wash him with water and siddur, leaves of siddur. And wrap him in his two garments of his ihram. But do not cover his head. He's going to be resurrected whilst he's doing the talbiya. Why? Because the way you die is the way you'll be resurrected. The state you die in is the same way you're going to be resurrected. Remember we mentioned, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ You die in a state of Islam, you'll be raised in a state of Islam. What's also mentioned, حَالُ مَنْ حَافَظَ عَلَى صَلَاةِ الْعِشَاءِ وَالْفَجَرِ The one who holds firmly onto the Salat al-Ishaa wal-Fajr. بشر الماشائين في الظلم إلى المساجد بالنور التام يوم القيامة. And the Prophet said, "Give glad tidings to those who walk to the masjid in the dark. The dark times is Isha and Fajr. They go to the masjid. They witness the salah in Jama'a. That they will have a complete light. يوم القيامة يوم ترى المؤمنين والمؤمنات يسعى نورهم بين أيديهم وبأيمانهم." On that day when you see the believing men and the believing women and the light is illuminating from them. We ask Allah to make us from them. Look to these actions. What can I do from them that will make me from these people? Just go into the salah. I'm getting this reward. The salah in jama'ah. Also, was mentioned, Fadl al-Adl. We mentioned earlier, from, it wasn't the shahid of the hadith but Allah says إِنِّي حَرَّمْتُ الظُّلْمَ عَلَى نَفْسِ وَجَعَلْتُهُ بَيْنَكُمْ مُحَرَّمًا فَلَا تَظَالَمُ The opposite of dhulm is what? Al-adl, justice. وَهُوَ وَضْعَ الشَّيْفِ مَكَانِي He's putting things in the correct places. Allah mentions إِنَّ الْمُقْسِتِينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَلَى مَنَابِرْ مِنْ نُورِ عَنْ يَمِينِ الرَّحْمَانِ وَكِلْتَ يَدَيْهِ يَمِينِ الذين يعدلون في حكمهم وأهليهم وما ولوا. Here mentioned those who are just will be with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on the day of judgment on manabir pulpits from light to the right of Allah Azza wa Jalla and both of Allah's hands are right. They will be raised above the people upon manabir min nur. Allah loves the muqsitin. Allah loves the people of justice. 
Who are they? Those who are just in their ruling, they're judging between the people, between their family, and in any position they're giving authority. When you see someone who has authority, and they're not fulfilling the rights that Allah has bestowed upon them, remind them of the likes of this hadith. Try to soften their heart. Even if it's your father, the ones who run a masjid, the ones who run a business, you see they're not fulfilling the rights of the people. Tell them, don't you want to be on a light, a pulpit of light with Allah Azza wa Jalla? Not with me, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah loves that you are just. When there are disputes between brothers, don't say, this is my friend, la. Bil adl. That you, you reconcile between them with justice. Why? Because I want to attain this reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned here. I'm not doing it for anything else. I don't want you to pay me. I don't want you to become closer to me. I am solely doing it to gain this reward that is mentioned here. When you see two brothers there fighting, look, come, you come. Let's sort this out. For whose sake? For Allah Azza wa Jalla. What happened? What happened? You listen. And you judge with justice. If you cannot be just, say, look, I'm not able to judge justly. Let me allow someone else who I think is better than me. Be honest with yourself. This is what Islam requires in Adil, that we are just in all of the affairs. But sometimes we fall short because we don't actually know the virtue of it. We don't know the reward that is promised. When you know the reward, you will hasten towards something. As they say, man arafa fadl shay, harasa alay. The one who knows the virtue of something will strive to attain it. Also, was mentioned. Halu those who withhold their anger i they suppress their anger at times where you may need to you, your natural reaction is to respond with anger what does allah mention وَسَارِعُوا <laughs> This ayah is shaman, it's comprehensive of many virtues. Allah mentions, Sari'u ila maghfirah, hasten towards the forgiveness of your Lord. And Jannah, ardu has samawat, is with, is the samawat, well ard is the heavens and the earth, is vast. One cannot imagine, but this is what you are to strive for. And whatever else Allah has described Jannah to have within the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that has been pre prepared for who? The people of Taqwa. Those who fulfill the commands of Allah and stay away from the prohibitions as a means of placing a barrier between them and earning Allah's anger or deserving punishment. This is the people of Taqwa. This is what Allah has prepared for you, Jannah. Then he mentions those who they spend in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal, whether it's in times of hardship or times of ease. When they go through easy times or difficult times, they still spend in a way that is pleasing to Allah SWT. Not only that, those who withhold their anger, when they're at the most angry point in their life, in whatever situation, they hold back. A sabab, who have to nafs. They control themselves. Shaytan, when he saw Adam being created, he said, Hada la yatamalak. He said about this person, Adam, I said, he does not know how to control himself. This is how Shaytan tries to come to you. To make you act in ways that you are emotional. That's why the Prophet said, La yaqdi qadi wa huwa ghadban. The judge cannot rule whilst he is what? Angry because you will not judge with justice. When you respond with emotion, your mind is not clear. You may do something that you regret after. You are to hold back your anger. The reward is great. It's Jannah. Was Allah also mentioned? Well, Afina and Inas. Those who forgive people, those who pardon people. People are going to oppress you. People are going to do you wrong. Yes, 100%. But forgive them hoping that Allah is going to forgive you for that. Yes, sometimes it's hard. But who are we seeking in reality? Are we seeking this life? We're seeking Jannah. 
So maybe one time I have to fight my desires more than normal. I'm going to forgive this person. Even if they oppress me so much, I'm going to forgive them. Why? Because I want Allah to forgive me. I've wronged the rights of Allah in ways that I cannot imagine. Because كل بني آدم خطاء وخير الخطائين التوابون Every child of Adam is going to fall into sin. But the best of them are those who seek forgiveness. But maybe I forgot to seek forgiveness. I wanted to. Maybe I forgot. Maybe Allah said, you know, I've forgiven this person because he forgave all of those people that oppressed him. Even if he had a right over them, he forgave them for whose sake? For the sake of Allah. Allah is going to say, I'm more deserving of this. And you'll forgive that person. So everything you do, you do for who? Allah Azza wa Jal. And the last that we will mention, الَّذِينَ يَحْفَظُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Because, subhanAllah, for me, this is of something that has been a focus of mine of recent, more than anything else. And it's renewing the relationship of the Qur'an. Because the Prophet said at that time, Allah revealed at that time that mankind has abandoned the Qur'an. Abandoned it. Abandoned reciting, abandoned learning, abandoned listening. Allah has honored people of the Qur'an. Allah commanded the Prophet Muhammad to go and listen to Ubay ibn Ka'b. To the point Allah mentioned him by name. And when the Prophet came to Ubay ibn Ka'b and informed him, Baka, Buka'an, he weeped. Why? He said, My Lord has named me. The Salafs say, مَا يَتَقَرَّبُ عَبْدٌ بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ كَلَامِهِ The person cannot gain closeness to Allah with something more beloved to him than his speech. The Salafs say, say, إِذَا أَرَدْتَ أَنْ تَعْلَمْ لَوْ أَنَّكَ تُحِبَّ اللَّهِ فَانْظُرْ هَلْ أَنْتَ تُحِبْ كَلَامَهُ They used to say, if you want to know, do you love Allah Azza wa Jal? Then look to whether you love the speech of Allah subhanahu Wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. The Qur'an. We are less than a hundred days away from Ramadan. Less than a hundred days. That this month that is approaching is the month of the Qur'an. And it's a month of Qiyam. And these two actions, they will intercede for you on Yawm al Qiyam. These two actions, the Qur'an, as we mentioned, will intercede for you. But who said we're guaranteed? Ramadan. We're not guaranteed Ramadan. How many do we know that we were with us last Ramadan? They're not with us now. We prayed their janazah. Or they were abroad. We've heard of their death. Or some of us, it might be us that are before this month of Ramadan. We don't know. So don't say, I'm going to wait. Ibn Umar, the Prophet Muhammad said, Ni'man rajul la salla bil layl. Prophet said, Ni'man rajul law salla bil layl. About Abdullah ibn Umar radlahu anhuma. He said, such a good man he is if only he prayed at night. He used to pray at night, but not all the time. He said, from he heard that, he never left of Qiyam al layl. He never left it off. The Qadr istita'ati, as much as he was able to, he never left it off. Why? Because he heard of the glad tidings for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet mentioned the hadith. Yati Quran wa ahluhu alladheena kanu ya'maluna bihi fi dunya The Quran is going to come. Yawm al-Qiyamah. And its people, the people of the Quran, that used to act upon it. Because Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he mentions, Laysa al-Hifdu bi hifd al-Huruf. Memorizing the Quran is not just memorizing the words. Wa innama al-Hifdu bi hifd al-Hudud. But rather, the true memorization is preserving the laws of the Qur'an. When you memorize it, you preserve it. You act upon it. Otherwise, it's going to be a proof against you. It mentions, تَقَدُّمُهُ سُورَةُ الْبَقَرَةِ وَآلِ إِمْرَانِ يَأْتِيَانِ كَأَنَّهُمَا غَايَتَانِ In another narration, غَمَامَتَانِ Here it mentions, أَوْ كَأَنَّهُمَا ظُلَّتَانِ مِنْ طَيْرِ صَوَّافٍ يُجَادِلَانِ عَنْ صَاحِبِهِمَا so he mentions there's a number of narrations regarding Ali Imran and Surah Al-Baqarah. They will precede the people of the Qur'an. And they will come as either two clouds, two flocks of birds, 
or Ghaya Tana mentions anything, anything that a person uses to shade themselves. And they will come and they will argue their case before Allah Azza wa Jal. Imagine the Quran arguing for you. The Quran will say, Man nom fi. I prevented him from sleep at night. Why? Qiyamul Layl. Qiyamul Layl. So allow me to intercede for him. Now, what, what season are we in? The winter, Ashita. Wa salaf, kanu yastabishiruna bi shita. The Salaf used to rejoice with the Shita with the winter. Why you say? Laylahu Tawil Lil Qiyam. Naharahu Qasir Lis Siyam. He said the night is long for what? Qiyam al Layl. But the days are short for what? Fasting. So as we say in ending this, as we're all seeking Jannah. But we have to do as much as we can because we're never going to do enough. None of us deserve Jannah. None of us deserve Jannah. Allah mentions, There are those who we have inherited from our ibad. We have chosen from our ibad to inherit the book, I to receive the Quran. There are those who will wrong themselves. They will disobey Allah. They will worship other than Allah. They will not fulfill the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal. You have those who are balanced. They only do obligations, stay away from prohibitions, nothing extra. And from them are those who are at the forefront of goodness with the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that is the true, the great virtue. فنسأل الله يجعلنا من السابقين الأولين اللهم آمين وألحقنا بالصالحين وربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة في الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ونكتفي بهذا القدم وصلي وسلم على نبينا وحبيب محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين أجان جزاكم الله خيرا especially for sitting for such a long time and your participation and we ask Allah عز وجل to record this heaven our scale of acts of goodness and as we have united in this dunya, that he allows us to unite in genital firdaus. Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allah khair. And anything I said that was incorrect, then that was from myself and shaitan. And anything that I said that was correct, then that was from the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakum Allah khair.